On a rainy day last winter, sat by the log burner, we came up with a crazy idea of taking my Princess 39 through the Baltic Sea to St. Petersburg, Russia. And on a flat, calm April day, we left Falmouth to try and turn that crazy winter dream into reality. Well, just three and a half days after we left Falmouth, here we are in Neustadt Marina in the Baltic Sea. We've had an awesome journey. It's been glass calm seas all the way, all the way up the English Channel, along the Dutch and German coasts, and then a very mellow cruise, eight hours at eight knots through the Kiel Canal. We got a great welcome here at the marina in Neustadt as well, because Stefan from Princess Motor Yachts was here with his son Luca. They come out on a Sunday afternoon with a really warm welcome and some cold beers just to sort of welcome us and wish us well on our journey. We also took the advantage of picking Stefan's brain because no matter how much you read the pilot books, the real information comes from somebody who lives here, who works here, who knows the sea and who can tell us the places to go and tell us the places to avoid too. So tomorrow we set out on our exploration of the Baltic Sea. From the 12th century, the Baltic was controlled by the Hanseatic League, a confederation of powerful trading towns and cities. Wismar, our next stop, was one of those cities. It's still an important trading harbour and traces of the unique architecture of its Hanseatic glory days still remain. But on an overcast Monday morning, it wasn't the best time to see the city, so we decided to roll on. Well, it's only our full second day in the Baltic and already you can see how much the weather's changed. You can probably hear it on the microphone. We were warned that the weather in the Baltic can just kick up so quickly and that's exactly what's happened. Yesterday it was flat, calm again and today we've got wind gusting as much as force eight later in the day. So for two nights we sheltered from the gale in the harbour at Warnemunde, north of Rostock. And probably not a bad thing. We'd been constantly on the move at sea for over a week now. It was a good opportunity just to relax, catch up with some sleep, and to wander round the colourful harbour. After two nights in Vornemunde, we headed out to sea in low visibility, and a force four westerly, forecast to increase, heading towards Bornholm. Well, the wind today hasn't actually been a bad thing since it's forced us to break our journey here on the island of Bornholm. We've rented a car, we've gone all around the outside of it, visiting all the little harbours, about 100 kilometres in all, and we've discovered why people really, really call Bornholm the jewel of the Baltic. Because of its pure white sand beaches that just seem to stretch forever. And Bornholm's must-see attraction is the massive, imposing medieval fortress of Hammerhus, reportedly the largest castle ruin in northern Europe. Built on a rocky headland, it's one of those places that makes your imagination roam. Yesterday I said that Bornholm was the jewel of the Baltic. Forget it. This is Christianso. I hope I pronounced it right. It's about 15 miles northeast of Bornholm. It's a tiny island, less than a kilometre square, and it is awesome. It's, I understand, it's one of the first island fortresses in the Baltic. It's beautifully preserved. Apparently, we English actually tried to attack this island once. It lasted about four hours and we were repelled. We didn't do too well then. Well, this is one of the most tranquil, amazing islands that I've come across in our travels. The tourist boat's gone now. Once a day it brings the visitors over from the mainland for a day trip. 
we stay for three hours, leave again. Now it's just us and the birds. There are about 60 or 70 people who live here full time, but there's no sign of anybody at all. It's tranquil, peaceful, and very, very beautiful. Tomorrow, we're planning a big day. The weather forecast is supposed to be good. The sea is supposed to be settling down. We could have got to Sweden today, but it would have been 100 miles of discomfort. So I'm hoping that tomorrow will be good. And the plan is that we are going to set off leave here by five in the morning, get up by about four, coffee, and go for it. Across to Sweden, fuel up in the mainland of Sweden, and carry on from there. And I'm hoping that we'll actually get two long legs in the trip tomorrow. But I'm told, particularly in the Baltic, you can never rely on the forecast. You can never know what the weather's going to be doing until you actually wake up in the morning and see it for yourself.